So I want to get to the meat and potatoes of tonight's one, that if that wasn't exciting enough already, just wait, there's more. Um, what I wanted to talk about today, um, and you know, I'm carrying most of the weight for all this. In the future, I hope more people can do presentations, but I wanted to tell you guys about KNF for home gardeners. So who has a home garden? Who uses KNF on it? Oh, you guys already know. Okay. So what does KNF stand for? Yeah. And how do we know that? It's because Dr. Park brought Master Cho here and over the past, I don't know how many years, since 2005, he's been helping to establish this to be something that we all know about, where someone can say KNF and people know. When I started doing this back 2009, 2008, when I met Ginger John, who's, who's the, you know, um, his farm supplies a lot of the food that comes here, nobody knew what this was like I mean, when i say nobody some people did but i would go around and say imos and people look at me like i'm crazy now if i say imos people are like oh yeah my uncle uses that yeah at the pig pen no more smell everybody almost everybody in hilo knows about this now and it's been a long time coming but tonight i wanted to talk about this specifically which is a maintenance formula and the reason I want to talk about this is it's KNF made easy. So what is it? Well, it's right here in this jar. Okay. Sue's so mixed these up from our solutions that we have. And I like to demonstrate this way so I can take off my mask a little bit. Super all no. The vinegar is good in this one. <laughs> but this is one of the few solutions. How, what other fertilizer guy do you see drink the stuff before he talks about it? What other fertilizer guy bathes with this stuff, puts it regularly in his water? Eye wash. Eye wash. Eye wash. Yeah. Guys that are working with living things, right? That are full of microorganisms that are alive, that are bioactivated, yeah? So this one here, this is what, what, is, what is in it is two parts of food. Okay, what is the food? We'll, maybe we'll get into that, but there's two parts of cleanser. There's one part of medicine and there's one part of structure. Now, the way I, I label these up here is a little bit different than how you're used to thinking of it, maybe. You, if you've studied CANF before, you may have heard certain acronyms. But the way I break it down here, let's ask yourself, what do you need for general maintenance every day? Do you need food? Yes. Okay. So yeah, we all need food, right? Everything from the base to, to us needs food. What about cleanser? Do you use cleanser in your life? Do you use the bathroom? How much times do you use the bathroom a day? A couple times, huh? So for me, I eat a couple times a day, food. Usually I eat twice. Sometimes I don't eat it all because you need no more time. But And I usually use the bathroom a couple times a day. You know. If I don't act, the problems are probably traveling, you know, whatever. <laughs> then, medicine. Do you guys think that's important to take? Yes. Especially if it's not the kind that, that takes you down, but it's the kind that lifts you up, right? Like the hippie type medicine, yeah? Who takes hippie medicine? Yeah, we love that, yeah. And who here likes to sleep inside? Like in a structure. So these things are pretty much the basis, right? If you think of it like Maslow's law of what you need from being your, your hierarchy of needs, right? That's sociology or psychology. It's like, if you don't have food, if you can't take a dump, if you cannot have access to healthcare and you don't have a structure to live in, then you can't even begin to heal with somebody, right? 
you got to take care of these first. Yeah, we got to feed them, get them clean, get them a little bit of medicine if they're sick and give them a holiday. You know? All these things we got to do. This is doing the same thing for your plants. Who thinks the food needs, or who thinks the plants need food all the time? Whoever thinks of their plant getting constipated, like it needs some cleanser, needs to clean things out from it. I think your plant has, needs to take a, you know, get rid of waste. Does it need medicine? Plants getting a little sick, you put the medicine. And if, you, if your plant doesn't have structure, what happens? The one difference is for us, we like structure on the outside. We also like good bones, right? But we like structure on the outside. The plant has its structure internally. And it also has its structure on the edge. If your plants are getting bit a bunch and you get bugs eating holes in your plant, this structure is like armor you could put on it. And so calcium is a big part of that, calcium and phosphorus. Those two elements are in the structure. And so this thing here, what I hold in my hand is this in this balance it is perfectly arranged so that when you give it to your plant, it can absorb it and it can then have all these things. It's fed, it's clean, it has structure, it has a decent amount of medicine so it doesn't get sick. That's what this is. So this makes it easy. How these are made is a whole nother lesson that I cannot get into right now. But if you continue to come to these or you get our newsletter, you'll find out how. But the best thing about this is it's all edible. You saw me drink it. I'm gonna drink it again. Now we have to put the mask back on. Woo! Anybody else like? I'll pass this one out. But where did something else besides the thing? Because I don't want to pass this stuff and make it all where we cannot have some. Or pour it into something else before you take it. And. It's also environmentally friendly. So we're not just feeding our plants, we're also feeding our soil, we're also feeding the runoff. So as, as, the, as this drips onto my neighbor's land or runs into my river, it's gonna make it stronger. So you're feeding all this on multiple levels from this one solution. So now that I have it, now that you guys are sampling it, we have these here. You guys can can take our, well, I think Suze is selling these. I don't know how much is each one? $10 each one. So if you want to bring it home, this, how do you use it? You take 25 milliliters, which is basically like half a shot glass. 20 mils would be okay. Half a shot glass, half an ounce, right? 30 milliliters. Okay. So. So a little bit more than half that. And you pour this into a gallon of water. Then you water and spray it on just once a week. You can water it more frequently if you want. And Moose, you use this on your farm, huh? Yeah? What, what do you see when you, when you use it? Um, yeah, we had an issue with a number of things. Um, Japanese rose beetle. Uh, other pests that were defoliating all the leaves, um, mosaic virus that was taking out a lot of the stalks, and we started spraying this on our plants uh, about a year ago, and had a yeah. speak louder. Oh. Um, yeah, we started spraying this on our plants about a year ago, and I would say more than ninety percent of our problems as far as like leaf defoliation and disease. Control, uh, we use maintenance, we use a couple of other items from the can supply. Uh, but at least we, I try to spray once a week, but a lot of times it's not even that much. At first, I started out once a week, uh, then that we found to like once every other week. And it makes an enormous difference. So I put it in this ratio here of just spraying and it's it's one liter or quart per 400 square feet. So 
you think of that as like a couple of these tables put together. It's just, you put this in a sprayer and if you missed it on there, you're just spraying just a liter, which is, you know, just a little bit bigger than this cup that you're spraying out there. I also put quarts because I don't really use quarts. I use metric when I measure these things. But that's to spray it. You can mist it on. You can also put it into your watering can, the same, put 25 milliliters per gallon in a watering can, and you can water it. And that water is 100 square feet, that same, um, that same liter. So it's about four times more volume if you're watering it on than if you're spraying it. Because if you're spraying it, it's going straight onto the leaf surface. And when you notice this, this spray here, it's only 400, um, uh, or excuse me, one quart per 400 square feet. It's gonna be just like you got misted. If you're seeing the water drip down and it's dripping plenty into your soil, you're over spraying. You don't need to, it's just a little mist. And what happens is when you mist it on, then the plant sucks it through its cells. The stomata and stuff open, especially if you do it in the morning or the evening, the stomata is open, goes into the plant and it's like giving it this meal. So if you're gonna irrigate and you're gonna water your plant, you may have more water than this, but this is the only amount you need for food and feeding. So just a little bit of misting goes a long way and it can really help to grow. What you're growing is not only your plants, you're also growing these microorganisms because as your plant takes that nutrients in, it then exudes it out through the roots and then the microbes get happier and you start to build soil better. So not only are you feeding your plant, you're also feeding all the trillions of microbes you don't even see that are on there. And it starts to build this system and the synergy starts to happen because as your soil gets richer, it's easier for your plant. And as your plant grows and feeds your soil, you get this cycle starting to go. So that's why feeding or watering it on, you don't need that much. It's only 25 mils and then a gallon, a gallon is four of these. So it's like 1600 square feet or something that you could do. I don't know, just on the fly map. So what I wanted to share with you guys tonight though, is this way, this system that we've designed here, this is the food taco system. This is a way that you can do a raised bed right anywhere and Here's the little scheme, schema of it here on the, the left side. It's, it's basically a part of corrugated roof. You see that, the, the iron roofing? And then these two by four frames that we put it in. And this here, a 10 foot section, gives you, uh, I think 200 square feet of growing zone. So you only need a half liter of that maintenance solution to go into there. So this here, this solution, I don't know how many milliliters are in here, but a lot. And um, this is almost equivalent of uh, three to six months, depending on how you use it, of nutrition that you can feed into this type of raised bed. This one here is like 30 feet long, so it's three of them put together. But, um, but this is what my mom is using to grow. This makes it so easy for her because she doesn't have to bend over. She doesn't have to do any weeding because it's, it's, all, it's all up at this top level. It's all right here. This system, we're working with this gentleman here. This is Mike Dutch. He works with veterans and they have a, a, a nonprofit called Mental Restorations. So we're working with him to implement this, this program where we're taking our solutions and his working with the veterans to build these systems, to get these out to people, to increase food security, to increase um, mental health, to work with people that have these disabilities that cannot bend over or whatever, that it, this makes it accessible for anybody and everybody. So, just a little bit more pictures of this. So, I can get rid of this other um, window here. Hang on one sec. Do you have a, in a greenhouse to... So there is a greenhouse over this, the hoop house. You don't necessarily need that. If you're doing the maintenance solution all the time, it has enough structure in its own self 
it depends. There are certain tender things you cannot grow right in the direct rain or the direct sun, but you can just put this on the side of your house where the, your eve is coming over. You put this right there. Now you got a spot where you can start to grow. And look at this. This is my mom growing all these onions. She get like cilantro in the back, some kale. That's her like salsa garden. We, we've grown papaya trees in these on accident. Grows, papayas come up, you can harvest them. <laughs> Wasn't on purpose. You can grow sweet potatoes in this. It's real easy because the sweet potatoes hit the side and make even more potatoes. Now you can do your sweet potatoes right at this level. You need to bend over. Right here, the sweet potatoes all day, reach in, grab one, snap them, put them back. And I don't put it back there, you snap them. But... <laughs> do you have a problem with slugs? No, and that's the beauty of this. I'm gonna go back one page right here. And on these legs, you can either put the legs into a moat of water with, with salt and put it so there's plastic so it doesn't, you have a little moat. Or you can wrap, if you can see on this one right there, he wrapped um, copper bands around them. So slugs and snails will not crawl over the copper. They hit that stuff and they turn back around. So he didn't finish it up, but he was gonna put um, copper bands on them. So again, you grind greens with no slugs, no um, no snails in there. And, and we're building them in these 10 foot units right there. So it takes about a half yard of soil. And then you put a little bit of mulch on top and you start to put the microbes and you inoculate it with this maintenance solution right here. And now you got a complete growing system for, for like six months with a little bit of seeds. And then if you let a couple lettuce go beyond and seed, now you got an infinite system. You know, you just get up, get up some more of this, take some classes, learn how to make this. All this can be made, you know, right here. So this type of system for any home gardener makes it just so easy, so approachable. And um, if you're interested in getting one, we'll be doing it pretty soon. Um, working, working to get these out. But, you know, here's, here's my mom showing Ron, who's another guy in the mental restorations organization, you know, and they, like he saw it and he was like, wow, that's such a good idea. He was almost going to build one on his own. Yeah. But then you guys stopped him so that we could do it together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's such a good idea to copy even. So, so in this too, my mom, she had what, kale, and this one is all her, um, her greens. You know, I think this is what, arugula, and I don't know, Lopaka's right in the way, but um, it's okay. <laughs> but all this stuff that, that you can grow, and it makes it approachable, yeah? So if you want to learn a little bit more about it, um, we just, this, this magazine right here, We've been putting this out. This is through um, our nonprofit. We've been uh, putting out the KNF Times. It's a monthly publication. Last, this last, uh, this month's January one is on the food taco. So has pictures of this, has kind of my mom's story, how she thought of this, how she wants to share it with everybody. Um, it's available right now online. You can get it at pureknf.org. Um, but we will have, um, I, I would have had copies for everyone tonight, but it didn't finish in time. But they will be here at the Sweet Cane Cafe uh, to pick them up for distribution. Um, and eventually we might start selling it, but it does say $5 value. So it's not, you know, so you understand that it takes a ton of time and energy to produce this right now. Yeah. Um, but what I think is best is to get this information out to people. And then every month, you get a recipe in there. So this month's recipe, when I talked about food earlier, this is how you make the food. Right here, it shows you step-by-step -step process to make it. So when you get this magazine, now you can take this home, collect all 12 of them from a whole year. You'll have all the recipes. You'll be able to start doing this. Um, maybe make a donation to our foundation. You know. So you can put it online right now? Yep, pure, pure and they're they're there right on there. Um, so, yeah. Can you make it grow your food? <laughs> yep, right there on that page. If you go to it, you'll. I put it several times, very prominently. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I want to just kind of conclude here. 
a little bit today of think of the beneficial runoff. You know, almost always when people talk of runoff coming off farms, it's like it's runoff in a poor sense. Like, oh, it runs off, you know, like the sweet potato guys that were farming this past week and then the whole ocean quarter mile out is all brown. It's like that kind of runoff is not what we want. If we start farming with microbes, with all these things as home gardeners, we think of this, that you're growing more than just your plants. You're growing the whole ecosystem. You're growing the future. You know, if we poison all the ocean and there's no fish for our children, our grandchildren, what are they gonna eat? Dirt water. And be like, oh, this dirt water is pretty good. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, they're gonna die. So, you know, the ancient Hawaiian system was all about water. It was all about vai. Vai vai is richness, yeah. So the water coming down, it lands up here in the mountain, comes down, goes through a lo'i system to clean it. You know, I just say lo'i, but this could be your food taco system going through to clean it before it comes out, yeah. And so think about it as a home gardener, start to incorporate this in. And if you want, pick up some maintenance solution, start watering your garden with it, and or start taking this and spraying public spaces. Come down with me to Hilo and start putting this down so we can build the microbes in the soil. And these, you know, I just want to give you some solutions. And together, we can make a better earth. So mahalo. Oh. Question. Great. Uh, I want to say your, your app is very helpful too. Moon calendar there? Oh. Yeah. yeah, I also develop a moon calendar. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, this I developed with Kalei Nuhiva um, from Bishop. And um, it's a moon calendar. Tonight is Kulu. It's a good night to plant bananas, excellent night to plant potatoes and melons. Not a good night to build a house, put up a roof or a fence because Kulu means to fall. Which if you notice, the last night was the full moon. Tonight, it's starting to wane, yeah? it's starting to get smaller and smaller. That's why today is Kulu, meaning to fall. But um, this is available on both the um, Android store and the I iOS store. It's Kahuna on Android and it's Mahina on iOS, but if you do that, it supports me. It's a couple of dollars, a couple of dollars but, um, but you know, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Always good to pitch that. Yeah. <laughs>